We'd had a lot of information trickling through overnight, but it certainly had changed in terms of the eye of the storm. So we looked at our travel tracker information and we were able to ascertain that there was 27 clients that were involved and over 400 people in the area. Initially we were getting a lot of calls from uh, travellers who were looking to find out what the situation was. Should they defer their travel or should they? Um, were they able to continue? At that time we decided to stand up a crisis management team and we look at the operational impact that that particular disaster has had. And we came up with three main parties that would be required. One was a logistical specialist, knowing where we could land if we needed to actually get an aircraft in. The second person was medical, so obviously we knew that there were some people that were potentially harmed by the devastation and the cyclone. And then there was a security specialist. And all three of those people had been involved in um, disasters in the past and they were able to be deployed really quickly. We deployed to Vanuatu within two days of the cyclone hitting the country and we were the first civilian aircraft there. To be able to deploy with a doctor and a nurse and provide support to, to these families who had just been through a very harrowing event is a critical aspect of what we can do here. When you first arrive, the priority is, is, is to actually do an initial needs assessment, which is from a medical perspective, you need to make sure, you know, look at the health infrastructure, look at the injuries, the wounded, and who needs urgent treatment or emergency um, evacuation. For example, the, the impact of the cyclone on the health infrastructure, assessing the hospitals, looking even at access to the hospital, the roads to the hospital, what's the effect on the ambulance system, um, what's the impact on healthcare workers, can they access the hospitals? There was, you know, not just hardy business travellers who were probably used to scenarios like this, but a lot of family members who wouldn't have been in situations like this before. When you prepare for an event like this, you want to take enough equipment to be able to run a field hospital. So you expect the critically ill patients, so you should be able to treat them and facilitate an evacuation um, to the nearest centre of medical excellence. And you should have enough equipment to be able to treat the walking wounded, and you have enough equipment as well to help those who, for example, have issues around water supply and so forth.